We have recently built several more budget conscious builds on this channel, so I want to throw about $2,000 into something that'll be great for streaming and gaming simultaneously. And without getting too technical, just know that X264 will heavily prioritize CPU usage, whereas NVENC will rely on an NVIDIA graphics card and an on-die encoder that will still pull some utilization away from, say, the game that you're trying to play. You'll see some drawback in experience from either one, at least on the gaming side. But when you can do both, when you can stream and game and not see much of a performance hit, at least visually, that's how you'll know you've built a well-rounded streaming machine. And that's exactly why this list is curated the way it is. It might not make a ton of sense to see an RTX 4070 in a $2,000 system. Yes, you could very easily reallocate resources and work a 4080 into this. You can see I've chosen a nearly $300 4 terabyte NVMe from Western Digital. This drive is an absolute beast, but you could scale this back significantly uh, if you were okay with, say, half a terabyte or even a terabyte of storage for around 50, 60 bucks. The Intel Core i9 12900K we've chosen for this probably stands out in this budget as well. Greg, why are you choosing a two generation old CPU? Firstly, I want to stay away from 13th and 14th gen Intel for obvious reasons, especially the unlocked K SKUs. But the 12th gen has been largely spared of those overvolting problems, and the 12900K still has performance and efficiency cores that will allow you to stream and game with ease. There are honestly so many ways to spec a rig like this, and I very clearly prioritize other things like storage and a beefier power supply and a more expensive case, which we'll talk about in a second, over sheer performance. This is more of just for somebody who has maybe deeper pockets, a bit more money to throw at a system, and can afford to be a little more flexible when it comes to those extra amenities like more storage uh, and more power headroom. Now back to the case we've chosen for this rig, definitely over the top. This is one of Antec's most premium, just luxury oriented chassis ever. They, they have seriously gone over the top here. This is the C8 curve wood. So consider a, a basic C8 case, which is not really basic, it's actually, again, a very beefy chassis, but then add a single curved piece of tempered glass to cover the front and left side panels and add wood to it as well. The front panel has a very, very nice wood aesthetic uh, that uh, I think just kind of ties everything and ties that premium feel. And some folks don't like the wood at all. And of course you could opt for the regular C8 that doesn't have that. Uh, but this again, is just for those that want to throw a bit more money into something that feels more premium that has more space than the standard mid tower. This has eight PCI slots at the rear instead of seven and is packed with cooling potential. So we've partnered with Antec in the streaming PC build video and we'll highlight some of the C8 Curve Woods features along the way. This should be a fun one and I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activations watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Now real quick before we get started, the one thing that you're not seeing in this big pile of components is fans. We don't have any case fans in the C8 Curve Wood. I actually like that. It gives me the option of kind of specking out my own fan kits for my rig. I'm not cornered into, you know, using whatever is already included uh, and that'll also keep the cost of the case down a bit. Uh, so we're gonna add about six or so 120 mil fans to the mix when the time comes. You can see we've got a 360 millimeter liquid freezer three. This thing is a beast. It's also slightly thicker than your average rad. We're gonna stick this up top. And I suppose while we're on that note, you can stick up to three 360 millimeter AOs in the CA curve wood simultaneously if for whatever reason that floats your boat. Or of course, if you're building a custom loop three independent 360 mil rads is pretty awesome. You can also fit a few 160s in here, or if you're not running any radiators at all, up to 10 fans in total. Oh, we also can't forget our power supply going with the Neo Eco 1000M. It's a thousand watt unit, 80 plus gold, fully modular from Antec. And uh, well, we're using Antec case, so. Antec power supply. So then let's get started as usual with our platform. We're gonna need the motherboard, the CPU, the RAM, and bits and pieces of our cooler. Also, can't forget our four terabyte WD drive. This part should be fairly straightforward. Let's get the motherboard out of its box first. Pull back on this retention arm to expose the socket. We're gonna gently drop our 12900K inside and back down she goes. Time for DDR5. Don't mix this up like I have in the past. Make sure that, uh, especially in Intel's case that you've confirmed, 
that the board you purchase supports the RAM you purchase. And lastly, we'll remove this heat slab to expose our uppermost M.2 slot where we'll install our SN5000. Ain't she a beauty? Very discreet. Also love that this is a PCI Gen 4 drive. I'm gonna carefully install it into the slot, minding the key. And tighten everything back down. Oh, would you look at that? I totally forgot. The CIO actually includes a special bracket that sort of replaces part of the socket in LGA 1700 motherboards. This is great for cooling, and it just makes the install much easier as well for Intel CPUs. So that means we're free then to install our platform into the C8 curve. Let's see. Doing this standing up is always a bit finicky. Yep, that right there looks good. And now we can tighten it all down with included Phillips screws, you know, the usual. Interesting note, this case actually supports BatConnect motherboards, but we've built several of those as of late and I would like to just go back to a conventional build for once. It's nice that this has it though. I can tell you that after just routing front IO, we are going to have so much leftover cable management space behind this motherboard tray. Next up is our AIO. We're gonna remove this top panel. It's totally toolless, which is cool. We can very easily slide this bad boy into position. I suppose fully installing the CPU earlier was a bit point Pointless, seeing as though we're removing the entire mechanism again now. There we go, now that is looking nice and clean. And there we are, looking very fresh if I do say so myself. And now it's time to throw some fans at it. Here we go. Don't worry, the fans were unharmed, mostly. Uh, they are in the case now and they look pretty darn good. You might be wondering why I chose white fans from a predominantly black build. I just love the contrast. I've got another unique way to uh, tie this all in at the end of the video. But uh, for now, I'm really happy with it. Of course, the C8 supports tons and tons of fans. We also have R3 up top. Don't forget, I'm gonna leave the rear empty so that we can see more of our motherboard. Now it's time for the power supply. Very easily set it into position here with the fan facing toward the right panel since the entire panel is perforated. Then fasten it to the case. And finally, we can move on to the last primary piece of this puzzle, our NVIDIA RTX 4070. This ASUS variant looks really cool. It's not a very beefy card, so it's not gonna stick out far past our motherboard. And the other great thing about 4070s in general, even though they're not necessarily great values anymore, I don't think that's gonna change anytime soon with NVIDIA, is the fact that this card only requires an additional eight pin supplemental PCI power cable. There is no 12 volt high power requirement for this card, which is really nice. I just hate fiddling with those cables anyway. It also means this is gonna be natively supported by a lot of older power supplies. Now I really appreciate Intet giving us full size rear slot covers. You can see once I remove these, we just end up with empty space. And that makes adapting things like vertical risers so much easier, especially with HDMI and DisplayPort cables running through. Let's get this puppy installed then. And yeah, I really like the size of this card in here. I love that it doesn't impede uh, our view of the uh, fans along the side of the motherboard. And we'll just tighten this down. And also, if it's any consolation, smaller cards tend to sag less than their larger counterparts. And, uh, well, this thing's not sagging at all. You also probably noticed that I haven't wired our PSU yet, and, uh, well, there's a good reason for that. I assured you I would tie the white fans in somehow, and, uh, well, the obvious choice, right? Custom cable extensions. These are solid white, and I think they're gonna do a heck of a lot when it comes to rounding out the looks of this build. Oh yes, this is making a huge difference. I'm really glad we threw these in. It's almost like some of the solid white from the fans is bleeding over into the darker components to the left. Now we just have to cable manage, and I gotta tell you, it's gonna be fairly easy to do that with how much space we have back here. It's gonna have everything sort of funnel in from above. And you know what? I'm not even gonna use zip ties. I don't need to. <laughs> this right panel, let me just, hey, how you doing? This right panel is, uh, is gonna go on so easily. Look at that. Look at that. Right, it's, it's effortless. I don't even think a single cable is touching this panel. And I didn't use any zip ties to keep them down. It's just, it's a piece of cake. Now before we can power on, uh, I've, I've got to get rid of this this mess. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a bit excessive. I've got boxes and you can see there's even more over here. You have just, it's, it's a bit of a disaster. I swear I'm not a one trick pony, but I'm gonna snap my fingers and the magic of editing will make all of this disappear. Right on, that was, uh, that was fast for you guys. It took me a little while to clean this mess up. Now quick side note, before we power on, get this dust filter in here. I'm also going to, hey, how you doing? Install this top panel. I want to show you what, I, this is something that I really like about recent Antec cases especially. Uh, a design like this tends to have structural weak points and, and oftentimes what you'll find is that case manufacturers will rely on the tempered glass to keep the case rigid, to keep it structurally stable. And tempered glass is not by definition all that 
structurally stable. I mean, it explodes into millions of pieces if hit in just the right place. And uh, so I want to do something that Antec didn't ask me to do, just to prove the point here, how well these cases are engineered. I am putting a ton of pressure on this, and you can see it, <laughs> it barely bends, like hardly at all. And that's with an AIO attached as well. This is a very, very solid chassis. It's very heavy. And it's just, it's, it's solid. She ain't going anywhere. And now I've gotta be honest, I think I prefer this case the way that it is here without the glass. I just think that it, it looks so unique. It's kind of like an open air style case, uh, the way that it is. But I will of course install the curved tempered glass. That's one of the big selling points of the C8 curve, of course. So it'll sit, actually, you know what? I did this out of order. So you have to remove the top panel first to get the, tempered glass side panels off. And it's gonna sit sort of like this right here. So I need to see what I'm doing from above. There we go. So it just sits uh, something like that. And then we just push in from the front and there we go. Fully situated. And at that point, we can then reinstall the top panel. So uh, yeah, I mean, Look, curved glass might not be your thing. This might be too ostentatious. It might seem pointless in your eyes, but I do think that it's it's really cool that Antec's offering cases like this. And when you have especially like high-end rigs in these, I, I feel like it does it justice. Like it's, it's just another elegant piece of the puzzle and really rounds things out for a build that costs, again, almost about $2,000. All that's left to do then is power this thing on. I've already got it hooked up. Let's flip the switch at the rear. We've got the power button up front. Power button up front. Oh, that's weird. I'm just gonna manually jump the power pins here. Let's see if that's the issue. No, that is not the issue. Alrighty. Um, we have a board that doesn't want to play nicely. I'm sure you're all wondering, yes, I have fully connected these extension cables. I've actually used these in uh, other builds in the past, never had issues. I've actually used this power supply as well in the past, so no reason to suspect that's gonna be the problem. Uh, let me see, all the cables are connected. I know it's really dark in there, sorry. Just wanted to give you a quick overview of what I'm looking at. I don't see any obvious issues. Even the PCI supplemental cable there, that's fully connected. Everything on the other side is as well. Huh, that's uh. That's suspicious. Yeah, this thing just does not want to power on at all. There's like no reaction at all from the power button or the power pins on the board. In fact, the only way to get any sign of life from the system at all, you probably saw it a bit earlier, uh, is by clicking the Q flash plus button, oddly enough. That turns the rig on for a few seconds before inevitably dying again. So. Take that for what you will. I really hate ending this way. I, I wanna fix this in this video. The problem is it's 6.30, well, it's almost 6.30 p.m. and uh, I have to be on a flight to New York tomorrow for some, some other stuff. Uh, and uh, I need to get this video out before then because I have other things in the pipeline for when I return that next week. It's just, it's a, the schedule's been a big cluster. I really hate leaving on a cliffhanger. This isn't old school YouTube where I could get away with like a two or three parter and expect you guys to just sit by and hang out and, and be cool and, and not obliterate me in the comment section. That is inevitable nowadays. I, I just, I simply do not have the time to, to test this. I have to edit this video tonight before I leave in the morning. So I will make you a promise. I will leave this rig assembled all week. When I return from the trip, we as a group will troubleshoot this system in a dedicated video. I, I have an idea of what's wrong with this just based on the few symptoms we've seen, but I want to document the process because this totally caught me off guard as well. Uh, and then at the end of that video, we will install Windows on this machine, we'll install OBS in a few games, and I'll show you how this actually streams because oh, it's important that I justify it further than just by my own words, this combination of hardware. A 4070 and a nearly $2,000 system, Greg, what on earth is that? 
here's a 3D Mark Time Spy comparison. So this is taken from another person's rig that have the exact same components we do in here. This is actually close to the mean score for this combination of hardware. Core i9-12900K and an RTX 4070 scoring better than 88% of all submitted Time Spy results. This is a DX12 1440p synthetic. And I think that's a pretty impressive figure considering this is again only a 4070 and not something like a 4070 Ti or a 4080 or especially a 4090. 4090s are gonna perform in almost every case better than 99% of submitted results. But the CPU can at times hold you back and it was important that we kept this rather balanced from a streaming perspective with the additional performance and efficiency cores to aid us in our ability to stream, which again, I'll show you next week. I'm very sorry I'd have to end it this way, but I, I really have no choice. I have just been slammed as of late and uh, I'm trying to play catch up. So thank you for your patience. You can leave hate mail in the comment sections, totally cool. But I can assure you we will get back to this in a few days. Man, it, it, it really sucks that, that we have to deal with this. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll turn it on one last time. We'll just pretend like it's working. Thanks so much for watching. My name's Greg and uh, thanks for learning with us. It just turned off again. Oh, and I almost forgot. If you wanna build a system just like this one, hopefully yours works. I don't think there's anything, again, wrong with this combination, but uh, feel free to part swap as you please. I will have all this linked in the description. Of course, the Antec C8 Curve Wood will also be there. Big shout out to Antec for supporting this channel. Show them some love. Check out this chassis. They have plenty of other uh, great cases in their uh, modernized lineup. They, they've been doing so well lately, and uh, we're very happy to have them on board as a partner. So, okay, that's all I have to plug. I'll see you in the next one.